Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Welcome back to another Saturday Snapshot episode on the Shared Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Susan, creator and founder of Shared Teaching. And today you are listening to episode number 88, where we're going to tackle some email organization to make your inbox more manageable. So like most things in our classroom, we really need a system and especially a system for our emails because they can get out of control very quickly. I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Now, my first tip is you want to limit your time checking emails. Of course, you'll want to check with your district or administration about what their expectations are for responding to emails. For example, my school requires me to check email daily and provides me 24 hours to respond to messages from parents. Once you know when you have to respond, you can create a schedule of when you need to check your emails. I tend to leave my email tab open and check my email throughout the day, which is not an effective use of my time, and I am not recommending that for you. I actually need to get out of that habit because I do not want my families thinking I'm available all throughout my teaching day because I really am not. So instead, we're going to try the Pomodoro technique. Now, the Pomodoro technique is fairly simple. First, we're going to choose how long we want to work on our email for each session. Because our goal is to limit our time, I will give myself three minutes for each of the four sessions. You can pick any time here that works within your schedule and what feels comfortable for you. A true Pomodoro method would be for all the sessions back to back with a short break in between. But of course, that's pretty unrealistic in the teaching world, so I'm modifying it just a little bit. So here's the steps. Uh, Number one, you're going to set a timer for three minutes. Number two, you're going to read and respond to necessary emails. Necessary. (laughs) Number three, you're going to stop when the timer goes off. And number four, you're going to wait for your next scheduled time. And then you're going to repeat those steps one through three. So setting your timer, reading and responding to any necessary emails, and stopping when the timer goes off. You're going to continue with these three-minute rounds throughout your day until you complete the fourth and final round or however many sessions you decide to check your emails. Now, the goal of this technique is to work on building that habit of checking and responding to our emails quickly. When we know we have limited time, we actually get better at finishing the task in the amount of time we have. Okay, my next suggestion is to create email templates for your frequent responses. So if you use Gmail, you can create email templates by going to settings, advanced, and templates. You can also create specialized keywords shortcuts, which you can find in the same area, settings, advanced. And there's a lot of goodies in there. If you haven't ever checked it out, give that a try. You can find your Gmail settings by going inside your email account and it looks like a little wheel or a cog and it's usually at the very top. My next tip is going to create labels or folders. So this is a great way to stay on top of all your emails. If you're a Gmail user, then again, you're gonna go to settings, then labels, and then create new label. Then you will simply create some categories for your inbox. Once you have your labels or folders, if you're using a different email system, then you can add the label. To add a label to a specific email, have the email open and click the label icon at the top of the email. Search for the correct label in the menu that appears. You'll notice that the email is now tagged with the label within the subject line. You can also create labels and then click on the folder with an arrow picture that appears inside your email at the top when it's opened. 
From this folder, you can move the email to that label. The email is now removed from your inbox, but you can access it by clicking on the label name. I like to do this with emails from my principal and my grade level so I can find them faster if I need to. So I'll have a little label that says admin. I'll have another one that says grade level. There is an article you can look at that has some great visuals and it's quite short about creating labels in Gmail and I will link that in the show notes. My second to last tip is to create an email signature. This might not help your productivity very much, but it will give your email a nice professional touch and also kind of passively tell parents about your working hours. I like to have my school hours and a notice about responding within 24 hours added to my email signature. If you have a Canva account, you can create an amazing looking email signature for free because educators get a free Canva account and it has a ton of resources if you've never looked at Canva before for creating flyers and newsletters in minutes and it's very easy and user friendly. Once you get the hang of how to add and change things. It's not quite like some programs like PowerPoint, but it's very similar enough that it's easy to use. So I'm also going to link to Canva within my show notes so you can check out that educator account. The last productivity tip I have for you is one that I literally just learned and I don't know where I was living before I found this out. And it's to sort your emails. Now, Gmail allows you to sort your emails so the unread emails are filtered to show in the first half of your email. The red emails will shift to the bottom, so you have a nice divide of uh, emails you want to read at the top and emails you have already read at the bottom. So when you open your email, you're not sifting through it. It's just right there, top or bottom is what you're looking at. So this is a great hack that I'm going to make sure I'm using this school year. And it only took me a few seconds, if even that, to set it up. So having your unread emails at the top, make sure you won't miss an important email that comes in. And if your inbox is anything like mine, I kind of pick and choose what to read throughout the day or the week, and it starts getting messy pretty fast. So to create these sections, you're going to follow the steps in your Gmail account of access settings, then go to inbox, and then it's going to say inbox type, and it's a little drop down. You're going to click on the little arrow, and then you're going to choose unread first, and then there's some other options in there too if you prefer something else. So I'd love to know what is your favorite email productivity tip. Today we talked about limiting our time when we check emails by using the Pomodoro method, creating email templates, creating labels or folders to sort your messages, creating an email signature to kind of give those parents the idea of your working hours and when you will reply to any emails. We're going to sort our emails is the last tip. So thank you so much for tuning in to a Saturday episode, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye for now. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching, hitting that subscribe button, and leaving us a review on iTunes so we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on shareteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast. Give that a try.